Hello, welcome to my first video in 2024. I wish everyone the best for the new year and that you may achieve all the goals that you want, uh, whether they are Pokemon related or not. Speaking of Pokemon related, let's head uh, quickly into that because I think this is going to be a long video. One of the goals that I have in Pokemon this year or this season is to qualify for the World Championship in Honolulu. And to do so, I am currently playing at some local tournaments, some Go Cups, at some Go Challenges. I already explained in my previous video about how to find these and where they are. And I just want to go quickly through how many points you can get. Because last time I only played a Go Cup. This time I also play a challenge. What is the difference? So, tournament-wise, the difference is not a lot. In a challenge, you can get up to 15 points as a competitor. And in Go Cups, you can get 50 points as a max. However, Go Cups can be hosted only once a three months per shop, I believe. And then challenges can be hosted more often. Ideally... I travel pretty far for them, like this was like an 80 minute drive or so. Ideally, you want a cup and a challenge uh, back to back. We didn't have that in Zwolle, we did have that here. We're now going to Boom in Belgium, where they did a cup and a challenge at PCG Shop. I want just want to say in advance, thank you so much for hosting this. We had a lot of fun, and I'm very much looking forward to the next one. So yeah, that was a short introduction. I also want to thank Amanda, aka Landberger. She also has a YouTube channel, and she's also making a video of this. Like I said, I drove to Boom, this time with no Tactical again, and with StatSense. So the competition was stacked, and I brought a double Charm team. Let's take a look at a lot of these battles in both the Cup and the Challenge. The first matchup that I have is against Kaifu00. I don't know him too well. I do know that he plays in some of my practice tournaments and some of my competitive tournaments. I think he's pretty good at it, so I didn't underestimate him exactly. But yeah, we had some interesting battles. I'm going to show only one of this round. I played him three times in total in the both over the cup and the challenge. In game one, I RPS him. In game two, he played ABA against me. He played, I believe, Lantern lead with future side Cresselia against me. And I do have Guzzlord. I added, unfortunately, on this Azumarill. And then game number three. Let's see how this goes. This was actually the most satisfying game I had over the whole weekend. Here we go. Jellicent into Azumarill. This is actually not that great for Jellicent even. Shadow Ball is just a little bit more efficient, but I'll see, I still need three, uh, sorry, three charge attacks. I need two Shadow Ball and a Surf to knock down this Azumarill. So I don't even consider Jellicent as a hard counter to Azumarill, but it was my best answer that I had. Also, probably my more bulky Pokemon to soak damage. Look what he's going to do. He's going to swap into Guzzlord and oh boy. Woo! <clears throat> Lovely. Lovely. Uh, you can probably already tell this is a very RPS game. Um, he brings in Cresselia even. I mean, at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm so sorry. So here's the thing about Kaifu. He took quite a while to lock on his teams. Um, I don't think you can really do that at regions, but at locals, you might get away with lock thinking four minutes about your team selection. But he really tries to call out your lines. And he actually took out some great names. I believe Thug Tactical also mm -hmm. lost to him somewhere. And he also gave me a very hard time in some of these rounds. You'll see later as well. Unfortunately, in the first and third round I, of this uh, matchup, I hard counted him so hard. So, not much he could have done with that, really. He tried to call my lines. Unfortunately, I called his line. <laughs> I didn't really call, went for a team prediction or anything. I just thought, uh, because in the first two games he didn't bring Skeletor at all, I thought my Wigglytuff is really solid. So, I'm going to bring Wigglytuff. It's very neutral against Pokemon like Azumarill, against Lantern and Cresselia, Vigorot. So that was fine. I brought Vigorot game one, but then he realized, wow, I'm so weak to the Clotsire. I can't really bring the, the Vigorot anymore. So I went to counter my Clotsire very hard with that Azumarill, with the Cresselia, with the Guzzlord. Yeah. This will take game number or matchup number one for me against Gaifu 0 0. My second round in the Go Cup is against Jojo VH, also somewhat of a local, she's also Belgian. And we played actually three rounds in. Uh, divided over the cup and the challenge so we played against each other a lot and looking at these teams my wiggly this is one of the few matchups where my wiggly top is really strong good against polyrath fine against charger bug very good against dragonair good against leaky tongue not good against clot sire and it's fine against cresselia somewhat now it was cresselia with future sight and grass knot and that made me lead to think one thing if it's going to be so difficult for her to bring that polyrath because i have two charmers i have jellicent um then my Guzzlord could be really good here. Especially if she thinks that she has to bring like a combination of Lickitung and Cresselia to counter my Wigglytuff. Guzzlord has so much play. So, this match that we're going to take a look at, I don't think, honestly don't think they're super exciting. My team combo is just very good against her. 
But I do want to point something out here that's very important. Um, not just towards her, but also towards plays in general. We see her Guzzlord into Licky Tongue, tremendous lead here. But she plays a little bit iffy because look at this. I sneak a whole Dragon Tail through. This is actually a pretty close matchup in the Zero Shields. I basically have to throw as the Guzzlord. I am going for that Dragon Claw here. But I feel very fine in this matchup with the Dragon Tail I just snuck through entirely. And look at that. This time it's better timing. I was actually, no, I actually found it very unfortunate. I wanted, I happily would have snuck another one there, going for a. Uh, now I'm at double drank and she is not at her body slam yet, so that means I win the zero to one shield here. She's actually going to put in a shield, but because of that one dragon tail I snuck through, I actually am able to win the zero to one shield here. I win switch plus I have a shield advantage. In comes charge buck. I know that she always brings the cloth side, so I know to align my wiggly stuff here. The Volt Switch are resisted, so Guzzlord is barely bulky enough to get to a Brutal Swing here. And look at that, Guzzlord taking a shield, plus almost taking out two Pokemon here. Really good play for, with that Guzzlord there. Guzzlord just in such a fine position against this team. Actually, there it was a blind throw there. Dis Discharge obviously would do more damage, but still a pretty bad attack. So Wiggly can take these charge stacks just fine, really. Two Discharge wouldn't even have knocked out. In comes Cloud, sorry, and you know the drill. Bubble Jellison does very fine here. It's a poison thing, Cloth, sorry, so uh, fast attacks do even less damage. She does bait the stone. She, she threw a lot of stone edge into my jealous scent and other Pokemon. But either way, doesn't matter for me. I have a full water type damage output here with this jealous scent, and jealous scent is easily going to take this matchup against the Cloth, sorry, here. I will use all my shields here because where else am I going to use at this point? Really tough is not good against Cloth, sorry, so if anything, I do not want it on that. Surf comes through. Yep, she lets it go. She knows it's over. So that is a good game there. Really strong team comes advantage on my side. And just the read that my Gus will be so good against her. That was tough for it to overcome. Round number three. I play against, again, though, tactical. Just like in Zwolle. This time we didn't practice before. And he did show me his team beforehand, though. And I show in mine. So I was super confident with it. But I was like, nah, I don't want to change it again. He runs Talonflame and Registry, which are great against my double charm. Pokemon, but because I have regular Polarat, I win the two shoes against Altaria, which makes my Polarat even better in this matchup. He also runs Moonblast Cresselia. He switched from Future Side to Moonblast basically last second. That's unfortunate for me. He did that to cover Guzzlord better, and Guzzlord would have been lovely into a team with Cresselia with Future Side here as well. So, kind of tough, but it does make my Clotsire better. Clotsire is fine against Talonflame, against Registeel for sure, against Altera, against Cresselia without Future Side. And then a Bomb Snow is an iffy matchup. I don't win the, the even shields, but I can always hit a hard hitting Stone Edge there. This is the one scenario, the one matchup where I find a lot of Nitos better than Wigglytuff simply because it does pick up that a Bomb Snow a little bit better than Wigglytuff does. Now, let's take a look at uh, both of these games here. We'll take a look at both games here. Because this is a matchup that I reckon most people would want to see as well. Take a look. We have a lot of Nitos into Cresselia. This is an okay matchup. I believe you need two Grass Knot here as the Cresselia. Uh, but the Charge will chunk. And it's like very neutral. I'm a Polarite in the back, safe from this Cresselia, so I'm very fine with that. He throws a Moonblast, actually. I believe you really need double Grass Knot here. But maybe you want to get a debuff there. I do three charms, optimal timing, then go for the Weather Ball. He may shield this. This does a reasonable chunk of damage. Actually, I'm not super happy with throwing that energy there, but I want to soften up this, this wish catch before throwing in my Polyrath. Kind of feel like this is a bait out, but if it's Registry in the back, I'm so fine with it because I have an even harder answer. Either way, let's see. Another Mud Bomb is coming through because, again, I have regular Polyrath. I survived this very easily. And I'm going to go for the Scald here. He doesn't go for the Charge Stack priority. He knows he would lose it. And this actually is Shield. So he's two Shields down now. Interesting play from him. I'm going to put up a shield as well. I want to keep switch. I want to get rid of this wish cash here. It's a threat to my Clot Sire. And he actually catches the Icy Wind. A very, very good play. And very annoying for me. Because this doesn't do enough damage as a Skull does. I stay a little bit. I want to form to uh, another attack there. But I realize the side cuts do too much. Didn't want to go in alone of Knights. But because that means I may have to shield an attack. And I want to keep that uh, shield for the Clot Sire. So I bring Clot Sire. This Cresselia is single stage debuffed. So that's fine for me. But the Grasslands will add up. And at some point I may get into... Focus plus range. I also need to keep that shield for the mud bomb still, so I can't shield anything from this Cresselia. Stone Edge comes in. This won't KO. I even undercharge it a little bit because I want more energy for when that Wish Cast comes back in, for when the Reg Tube comes back in. <clears throat> so yeah, Grass Knot comes through, doesn't do any damage at all. In comes Wish Cash to take my last shield. Going to farm up a little bit more. I know he's about dry. And then go for the Stone Shield. I don't want to swap out because that would allow Red Shield to farm down and get to a, a Focus Plus that may knock out my Clot Sire from this range. Ah, uh, barely not, maybe. Either way, 
Let's see what comes back in here. We have the Registeel as predicted. And this is somewhat okay. I still have a lot of Knights, which I can just throw in and soak a, an attack. He has to throw one. But he also has a catch if I do that. So I go into Night Tails here. So he has to expect energy here. Looking very fine for me. Make a slight mistake here waiting out the clock, but I, I think it's fine, honestly. And now something annoying happens because I wait a little bit there. I tried to tap my Earthquake, but didn't register at first. And then it does register and he catches it. Honestly, good play by him, but I was super frustrated with that because I waited a little bit to make sure he doesn't catch. That he keeps doing lock-ons, but uh, didn't register. Or maybe, maybe I'm just on copium, I don't know. Either way, Bonnerad's still a little bit alive, even though it took some side cuts. Gets to an Icy Wind here, and man, I need to land one more counter, and it does land. <laughs> and I actually still win game one. I was very relieved with that. Game number two. I was like, okay, I was pretty strong against the Bomb of Snow with the Yellow Knights. With the Polarad, there's no way he brings a Bomb of Snow. Game two, he leads a Bomb of Snow. And it has Icy Wind. I know I can take it quite comfortably, but I can't take two, especially with those Power Snows adding up, which will do a lot of damage. He goes for the Charge Stack priority. Maybe could try to catch it, but... It's kind of risky if I do, because in that case, the energy ball, if he goes for that, will be super effective, and that would do a lot of damage. Going for Stone Edge here, he actually does shield that, will put him quite low, even after a debuff. Let's see. And then goes for another Icy Wind. This will take me out, but at this point, I'm like, wait a second, I think my Polar in the back is really good here. Then he swaps in Cresselia. For some reason, I didn't expect this. He wasn't, like, weak to... Uh, he wasn't, like, ABA to anything or something, but... Honestly, should have seen it come because it's his prime answer to the Polyrad. Goes for a Grass Knot. In Ultra League, you can take two Grass Knots just barely. In Great League, you cannot. So I'm going to go for a Shadow Boy here. Ideally, I hope this does enough damage and get and I can get to a Surf, but he has too much energy advantage to for me to outpace him. So I'm going to put it all on Polyrad. I know it's going to be like Wish Cash in the back, maybe even Talonflame, maybe even Altaria. I need the energy on Polyrad. I need to counter this all the way down. He's going to go for a Grass Knot here, but little does he know, he's not going to get to another one. So maybe his best play was to go for a Moonblast there to try and get a potential debuff there. Look at how much energy I have at this point. In comes Wish Cash. I'm really hoping to get a debuff here. I don't get him a lot, but it would be great to get him in a crucial moment like this. He shields that, and I do get the attack drop. That's wonderful. What was the lead again? It was a bomb slow with a little bit of energy. Not a lot, but it will definitely do... An energy will, will take me out. A mob bomb won't get at this range. Gonna go for another Scald here. We'll do a good chunk of damage. Another attack drop doesn't really matter as much at this point. I wasn't going to shield him up on man either way. Go for the Ice Wind on the charge stack priority. He overfront a little bit. I don't know what he was doing. He didn't know what he was doing. And now I have a shield up against this Abomus. Now I still have energy. I still have a shield. I'm very fine here. Gonna go for the Ice Wind here. And this will give a this will lead to a 2-0 win for me against the tactical. I'm very unfortunate for him, but he is 2-1 now. So he's still able to get to the top cut in this Swiss format first. My last round in the Swiss format. Format in this Go Cup is against Statistan, one of the best and most consistent trainers in last Pokemon Go Championship series in the Play Pokemon season. And this is a very important round for him. He lost against the Tactical uh, before in this Cup, so that means that he's 2 1 right now. And if you want to guarantee your place in the top cut, you need a 3 1. So this could be very important. This is, there will be one person with a 2 2 score who will also qualify for the top cut. And reaching the top cut means you are guaranteed to get 32 points. Let's take a look at these battles. I'm actually going through both battles here because I think this is a big name and uh, we want to see uh, battles against big names, right? So here we go. Guzzlord into Cresselia. Yes, Moonblast Cresselia. So this is, I believe, a matchup I lose in all even shields. Maybe if I double bait the Dragon Claw, but only that that would be very bold of my of myself to do. Under that, it's not the worst matchup either. Like I will always land a brutal swing at least if I use at least one shield because brutal swing is five less energy than crunch, which means I will pay slightly faster to that second brutal swing here. As you can see, I'm already at the next one. This will drop the Cresselia into the red, which is uh, nice because. Now, if I catch the Moonblast, which I do, I waited two turns, then swap into the Cloth Sire. This is resisted. I knew it was going to be that Wish Cash that he likely will always bring. I was very afraid of uh, Altera, though. And this is not great, right? Because this will do so much damage. Look at my, how little my Earthquake does. One positive thing about this whole game now is, look at how much health my Guzzlord still has. It has so much HP, because Cypher Cut from the Cresselia just did nothing on it. Gonna go for a Stone Edge. I know he will throw his next mob bomb on charge stack priority, so I just want to get some chip damage in here. And he has to throw... Look look at how bulky Glotzar is. He has to throw another one before I get to a Stone Edge. Well, he could have farmed down and take it, but I didn't want to... You know, I want to go for Stone Edge. He didn't want to take that risk. He has a lot of energy on that Wish Cash. I'm gonna go in the Polyrath. I knew it was going to be Gligar. And here I make another catch here. 
my polar rat, regular polar rat, actually wins the one shields, I believe, against this Gligar. So I wasn't in trouble anyway, but I want to make it a little bit more difficult for him. And going for the Drancoid, this will put him very, very low. Now, I don't know if this was the ideal play, to be honest, because swapping into my Guzzlord here does mean that Polar has to take out that Cresselia later, which has, which is into the red. It still has some HP as well. So, not sure if it was the optimal play. I will shield that Aerial Ace, because otherwise he will get to another one on my uh, Polar which I would have to shield, and that may make it a very clean uh, sweep for the Wish Cash, which is almost a 2 mob bomb already. Or for the Cresselia, in comes Cresselia. I'm going for the Icy Wind immediately, so the side cuts will add up less. I already recognize immediately he will get to a Moonblast. So I'm going to have to counter this down entirely. And since it's regular Polyrad, I have a little bit more bulk. I don't hit as hard with the counters. But I'm able to survive this Moonblast, barely counter down, and then come out with a full Skull, which will take this game number one for me against Statistan. Massive. Absolutely massive. Game number two against Statistan. This is actually a weird round, because let's take a look at my team here real quick. And then let's take a look at his. He has a Registeel on his team. It does a Flesh Cannon, Zap Cannon, so my Guzzlord does a little bit okay. My idea was that if he needs Registeel, I just throw a Shadow Ball, switch it to Guzzlord. If he throws an attack, great, he's dry. And otherwise, I may be able to get energy on Jellicent later and still put up a very good fight against Registeel. Because Registeel is clunky, can't stack two attacks or so, you know. So Jellicent does have some play there. But then I paired with Wiggly in the back, meaning I have no Registeel answer. So incredibly poor team on my side. There was an idea behind it, I'll admit. But... Registeel not in the position that I plan it to be is a problem. This lead is not a problem. We have Bubble Jelly into Shadow Glagger. This is exactly what I have Bubble for. He does a wing attack and then goes into Wish Cash. I'm going to go for... Uh, actually, I'm going to take a Mob Bomb first. That's okay. I mean, if there is Registeel, the Zap Cannon will do way more anyway. So I can take a little bit of damage, damage here. And then going for a Bait. I just had a feeling he would shield that. I'm trying to fake a Shadow Ball a little bit. That's why I missed the Bubble. Then going into the Gus Lord. And I just feel like I like Guzzlord a little bit more here because it gets to the charge stack quicker now that I already pulled one shield. Otherwise, he might get two Scald. I don't like Wish Cash, really, because it will Scald immediately, and then my, wish, my Wiggly Tough will even have problems there. So I'd rather go into Guzzlord there. Going for the Brutal Swing, this will put the Wish Cash incredibly low. And now I'm pretty good. He goes into Gligar immediately, actually, which I don't mind at all. I would get to a Brutal Swing there, which will put him into the red, but he throws immediately. And I then, as soon as I swapped the Genesis in, I was like, okay, I can do, he's dry, I can do three bubbles now, and then throw my Surf. But then I rem remembered he did one wing attack before switching out. So he almost bamboozled me there. So I go for the Surf immediately here. Does he shield that? He does shield it to preserve the Gligar. Goes two shields down, but I will not overfarm too much here. I'm actually just, I think I'm going to throw the Surf immediately, maybe. Maybe overfarm by just one. Yeah, over farm by one. Then going for the surf here to knock out this Gligar. He still has that Wish Cash though. Not sure what to expect at this point. If he comes back in with the Wish Cash, I actually expect the Skeletor in the back, and he does come back in with the Wish Cash. So at this point, I'm very eager to protect my Jellicent. I need to get to surf on that Skeletor. Let's see. I can't farm down, but it's Registeel. That's exactly the one Pokemon I did not want to see. And look at it. Shadow Ball is coming through. I'm going to lock this, Jell this Registeel. Uh, Really? He will get to a Zap Cannon there, but because I over-farmed as much, he kind of has to come with another attack here. And Wigglytuff has so much HP. Look at this Flash Cannon. It does super effective damage. But the lock ones don't add up at all. Wigglytuff has like 200 HP or something. So he has to throw an attack. Otherwise, I get to Disarming Voice. He has to throw like Zap Cannon, undercharge it, and then farm down. But then I get to Disarming Voice, maybe even Charm Down. So he can't do that. And look at this. Because he can't stack two attacks, I get to the Surf here. Basically win the game. Registeel. No problem, even though I was like three times weak to it. Bubble it down. In comes the Wish Cash, which goes down in one bubble as well. That is a good game. So, moving on to the top cut. I swept the Swiss, so I made it there. And I'm also in the top cut with Kaifi00, with Jojo VH, and Dog Tactical. We all have 32 championships points so far in this Go Cup, but the winner gets 50 in the end. So, let's head into the final, see if we can win it all. In the first round of the top cut playoffs, I play against Jojo VH again, who I played in round number two of the Swiss. I unfortunately forgot to record these battles. I think I couldn't find them anymore. We did take a nice picture, though, uh, of us playing together. So in this matchup, again, this is the one where I had a huge team combat advantage with my Guzzard, so where my Guzzard was so good. This time she took more of a risk. She brought the Polarad a couple times. She had it to align to my Guzzard once, I believe, but my team combat was just a little bit too good with the Jellicent, with the Guzzard, and with my Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff was aligned to Clotzar even once, but I know from the Go Battle League that this matchup is not even the worst. She will get to an Ice Wind as the... Wiggly tough, and it will get the clots are actually quite low. So I took this matchup 2 0 as one 4 0 against her, and I will move on to the finals um, against Kaifu 0 0, who had just beaten Tho Tactical. So in the grand finals of the cup, I'm up against Kaifu 0 0. We played before in round one in Swiss, where I beat him 2 1. 
And I'm curious on how he's going to adapt this time. It's very hard to predict him. I know he will bring Azumarill somewhere. Not sure about the Lantern because my Guzzard was quite good against him last time. Let's take a look at how we are going to adapt. Now, one thing that I did learn from the previous round, this is the third battle, is that my Guzzard wins charge attack priority against his. So I can kind of safely throw my Dranklaw here, which I'm going to do right away. See if I can pull his shield immediately. He does go for the charge attack priority, knowing he will lose it. And I'm actually going to make a very interesting play. So earlier, I let this go. And I believe I brought in um, my Cloth Siren. This time, I'm going to anticipate him catching on Azumarill. And he actually doesn't throw at all. I snipe him with the Wigglytuff. And he brought the Skeletirch. I believe this is one of the first times he brought the Skeletirch. Yeah, this is the first time he brought the Skeletirch, I believe. And this is very tough. Because this Skeletirch energy is just so good. Super effective on my Jellicent. Super effective disarming voice on my Guzzlord. We have anywhere to go. It also starts a priority against both Pokemon. Throwing the Ice Wind there. Giving it a, one more Incinerate. Is it smart? I don't know, man. But I'm going to go for the Guzzlord. Try to come in immediately. Throw Dranklaw, but he's quick. He actually makes a very smart play. Going for the Shadow Ball in case I want to be smart. And take it on my Jellicent. Predicting the Disarming Voice. Look at this. This is going to get very iffy at this point. I might be okay against this Azumarill. But man, if I just had like Switch Advantage or Shield Advantage, my Jellicent with a Shield Up would have been so good. Would have been so good, right? Play rough. I shield it. I think it does the most damage at this point. I'm not sure anymore if I had counted the Skeletor's energy there. Shadow Ball comes through. I will need another one, though. And not going to be enough. He can take me out with two player off at this point. I need a Shadow Ball plus a Surf. And I believe I also still get a bubble. Maybe Surf in on that Skeletor. But look at this. I'm actually getting way too low here. That one Incinerate was so crucial that this, this next player off will actually take me out. Yeah, I miss it by one bubble. Very close game. If I didn't catch there, I may have won it. But on the other hand, though, I don't know, man. Like, he could have. My idea was that he could always throw in the Azumarill at any time, take the Dranklaw there. It would be a waste of energy. So I didn't want that to happen. But yeah, well played to him. Well played to him. Uh, he put up a really good run there, right? He beat me and Tho Tactical in the finals of his Go Cup. And, you know, that's not <laughs> that's not given to anyone. So, you know, I still got 40 points out of this Go Cup. And now we have the challenge, in which I'm going to use my Zwolle team again. So, as I was making this video, I realized this was probably going to take about 50 minutes. And I was like, you know what? Why not make two videos out of it, right? I haven't been uploading a lot of videos lately, so I might as well make it multiple of them. Um, so, yeah, this marks the end of this video. I got 40 points out of the second place. I beat Kaifu in the Swiss. But then he got me good in the finals, and that's where it mattered the most. He got 50 points, and a big congratulations to him. Now, in the next video, we will play the challenge. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.